didn't score his house is in Palos Hills, Illinois, just south of Chicago. Before I could get in to see him, however, I had to be cleared by his security guard, an oversized R2-D2 called A-Rock. Thank you. To most men, their home is their castle, but to Ben Scora, it's his toy. Ben is a successful hypnotherapist whose own therapy is tinkering. He's a high school dropout with a genius for gadgetry. Everything in the house runs electronically, including the furniture. When Ben says pull up a chair, the chair pulls him up. Hi, John. Glad to see you. Hi, Ben. How uh, are you? Please have a seat. Oh, no, thanks. I don't sit in electric chairs. <laughs> well, come on, then. Let me After you declining the electric chair, Ben offered me a stationary sofa to sit on. I asked him how he'd come to build this mechanical butler that greeted me and almost ran me over. You know, I'm Polish. And the reason uh, I got Iraq is because I started out building a television set, and there you have it. <laughs> He's capable of uh, lifting and carrying at least 125 pounds, so consequently he can take out the garbage, bring in the mail, he can vacuum, he can take the dog for a walk, and, uh, you know, which is, which is nice on a rainy day or something. He's uh, six foot eight inches tall and weighs 275 pounds. What did you make him out of? But mainly automobile parts. There's a lot of parts. Uh, the electric motors are from the electric windows and Cadillacs and things like that. Well, I used to have all my cars radio controlled. I mean, full-size cars. I could sit in my living room or out on the porch and drive it around the street and things like that. Drive what? people nuts. That's another reason why I built a robot. Uh, the attention that that car got in spare parts and time, Ben says he's put three quarters of a million dollars into AROC, almost as much as he's put into repairing some of his old cars. Living with Ben is quite unusual. He gets his best ideas in the middle of the night, and he gets up at 2 o'clock in the morning and goes out to the garage. Ben's best ideas have been programmed into a small handheld remote control unit which performs over 150 functions. Uh, all right, say I come home in the evening, I'm a little tired, and I would like a drink. And I push these buttons, and there you see the bar opening. <laughs> if I want a little privacy, for instance, I push these two buttons, and the drapes close. Now, if I were sitting in another chair and I wanted the light, I would push this button and that button, and now you see the light is traveling over to where I'm sitting. Now, if you want a little waterfall and some music, why, we hit that button and that button, and you have a waterfall with a little background music. Sometimes I've turned on the light and flushed the toilet. I don't think she still knows where all the controls are because every once in a while she'll say, uh, what number do I have to push to make this work or that work? One time the elevator stuck downstairs. She got frantic because, of course, at this point, that's the only entrance to the basement. Not having a degree in engineering, Ben said he builds everything by just visualizing it, then following that mental blueprint. When you were a youngster, did you used to tinker around with gadgets all the time? All the time. My mother and father had to hide everything from me or I would take it apart. <laughs> every time I get something new, I've been waiting so long to get something new. Within a week, he has it all apart. He's changing it to revise it into something different. Ben, has there ever been a time when you've had a party here and uh, somebody got a little too sloshed and maybe pushed some buttons they shouldn't have? Well, we haven't had too many drunks here, but uh, we had a salesman one time that was really obnoxious. Uh, he was trying to sell some magazines, and boy, he just kept at it. And we, you know, we couldn't stop him. He kept saying no. And finally, I said, so, hey, well, why don't you step down there and I'll go get a pencil to sign the contract. Yeah, and as I went for the pencil, I picked this up and I, I pushed a couple of buttons on this thing. The wife and I immediately uh, walked back up to the to the back and uh, waved goodbye to him. You know? So there we were up there waving goodbye, and uh, of course he was so stunned, he just sat on here and went right outside. <laughs> ben has designed his far outhouse, as he calls it, so that his living room revolves outside and the patio moves inside. Well, I come from Southern California and earthquake country, so I couldn't appreciate this as much as I would have liked, because when the house started turning, so did my stomach. Sharon, uh, would you show John to John, please? Well, here it is, John. That's is it. Sharon, you never promised me a rose garden. Push the button up there. This one here? Yes. <laughs> Looks like a man eating toilet. Oh, it is. <laughs> <laughs> what happens if you have a power failure? Well, I've, I've gone someplace else. <laughs>
We have been doing research with telekinesis, which is uh, involved moving objects by mental control. The little robot that I'm building that I have in the garage there, uh, in the end, at, you know, when I get through with him, he will be moved by mental processes. There is actually a force that the, the mind or electrical impulses that the mind puts out that actually can move objects. Do you really believe someday that you could put away this little gadget here and move these appliances with your mind? Yes, I do. Sharon, does Ben have you programmed? When Ben ever wants anything, all he does is push my, one of my push buttons. <laughs> yes? Depends on how he pushes the buttons. <laughs> a chair is still a chair Even when there's no one sitting there a room is still a room Even when there's nothing there but glue <laughs> Darling, have a heart Don't let one mistake keep us apart 